Uh, thank you for your question. You, you probably recall from our discussion inside that uh, Yona asked me another question. He asked me to explain what the problem was all about in Northern Ireland. Because he said he finally couldn't understand why it was uh, that two sets of Christians were busy fighting each other and have been doing so for so long. But it's really very simple. Believe me, it's very, very simple. If you think in purely religious terms, you'll never understand it. You've got to realize the basic issue is one of nationality, of how people identify themselves, whether they identify themselves as Irish or British, and it's a secondarily, it's about the distribution of public goods within society. And as those are the issues. Uh, we tend to use the terms Protestant and Catholic because they are the best identifiers of this. 92% uh, of Catholics identify themselves as Irish. Uh, the percentage of Protestants identifying themselves as British is higher. So the terms Protestant and Catholic are used as identifiers of an issue that is essentially national. But there is also another factor that comes in as well. Uh, most of the countryside of Northern Ireland is uh, mixed. But during industrialization in the 19th century, people moving from mixed rural areas into ur major uh, urban areas, and the major one of course is Belfast, very quickly the working class segregated and segregated neighborhoods developed. The middle class tended to be integrated, the degree of integration varied, but the working class areas very quickly developed to be, oh, 95 to 100% uh, you know, solid one way or another. Uh, civil disorder, occasional rioting during the 19th century did this. We came into the 20th century when the police would have on the, the main area where the working class were living side by side between uh, in West Belfast, between the Falls and the Shankville, there was a line on the police map. There was no line on the ground, but there was a line on the map. On one side of the line was 100% Protestant, the other side of the line was 100% Catholic. With the recent troubles developed, then it became convenient for a security reason to turn the line on the map into a physical barrier. It aided from the point of view of keeping the peace, and barriers that started there developed elsewhere. Since the Good Friday Agreement, what, 13, nearly 14 years ago, the number of barriers has increased. But these should now really be called not peace walls, but anti-social behaviour walls. Uh, because on the interfaces, and most of the interfaces are not marked by barriers, but on the interfaces, which during the troubles, during the violence, people kept away from the interfaces because that's where there was rioting and shooting. The, that no longer occurs, there are no longer ambushes, no longer bombs and shooting at the interfaces, but there's fun. You can go there if you're young, you can get bottles and stones and throw them at other people, and that's great fun. We, we call this recreational rioting. And it tends to happen more often in the summer than in the winter because it's warmer and there isn't so much, quite so much rain. Uh, and so we tend to get trouble in the, the, the summer. Uh, outside commentators attach this to the marching season, which also takes place in the summer. Uh, sometimes there's a connection between the two. More often there's not. I don't think there was any connection with, with the marching over the recreational rioting on the Newton Arch Road that took place in Belfast over the last couple of days, which started to get quite serious. Uh, rioting incidentally taking place just two to three miles away from the golf club that Rory McIlroy is a member of who won the, the, the US Masters there just the, you know, over the weekend. So it's good, got these things cheek by job. But we have spatial segregation in urban areas. And once you've got spatial segregation, other things will flow from that. Educa education is segregated, partly for spatial reasons, but also partly for human rights reasons. It's the enshrined in human rights instruments is the right of parents to uh, have an influence over or to be able to determine in broad shape the education of their children. And this has resulted now in a largely segregated ed educational system, uh, certainly in primary schools, not quite so segregated in, uh, in secondary schools, and even less segregated in the secondary schools that specialise, the grammar schools that specialise in serving the middle class and producing people that will be going to the universities. There's a degree of integration there, but not elsewhere. Efforts that were made by unionist governments in the past to produce an integrated educational system failed uh, on the opposition of all the churches and can't be repeated, even though everybody says we should have compulsorily integrated education. You can't because it's against their human rights uh, to do that. 
Consequently, we have to do special programs called like Education for Mutual Understanding. All schools are put under an obligation to make sure that their pupils are uh, made aware of the existence of the other, that there's some program for interaction with the other, uh, in order to bring them to, to, to try and broaden outlooks in that respect. But that's uh, almost a sort of sticking class uh, area. The one area of life which is reasonably well integrated is leisure and work. Work wasn't altogether integrated. There was a degree of segregation in work, uh, but under uh, quite stringent legislation, the Fair Employment legislation has produced a, a degree of integration in the workplace. It's not absolute because if you take somewhere like there was a major employer in uh, the West Bank of uh, the in London Dairy, the population there is 100% Catholic. There's this employer has got 800 employees, uh, and his employees are. 98% Catholic. Uh, normally that brings the Fair Employment Agency down on you like a ton of bricks, but there's no way the employer could get to increase its percentage of gross and employees in the physical environment it is. But outside special cases like that, there is a degree of integration there. But dealing with this highly segregated population in terms of uh, it's uh, a living, education, and large parts of its social life, because the church has determined large parts of social life, that grows problems for us in terms of the political process. We were able eventually to get agreement at the top level among the politicians. Getting that translated onto the ground is a different matter. Uh, your question was to me, why did we have difficulties persuading the public? Well, uh, for the, a large number of the public, agreeing to some form of power sharing at the upper level meant agreeing to compromise, agreeing to a situation where you were not going to achieve a victory over the other, but had to acknowledge and accept the existence of the other, and that was difficult. There was also the factor that for 30 years politics had not worked, and there was a huge scepticism within the public as to whether a deal was going to work. Uh, furthermore, we couldn't tell them in advance there was going to be a deal, A, because I didn't know there was going to be a deal, and B, if I went around telling people beforehand that I was anxious to get a deal, then there would be lots of people in my party who would be anxious to get me out of leadership. So, uh, for tactical reasons, I had to you know, play, play my cards close to my chest, and a lot of people were then surprised at the very end of the process where, instead of a breakdown, we had an agreement. That caused a little bit of difficulty, although that's part of the reason why the implementation period span out, because it took quite a bit of time for the man on the street to get his head around this situation and to realise it was a good one, which I think by and large they have. There is no longer an issue within uh, the society at large about the existence of the political institutions that flowed from the Belfast Agreement, what we call power sharing and various other things. That's generally accepted, but we still have some problems on the ground. And that is going to take a lot of work, and I would, and I don't have time to do this, I could be, you know, have some criticisms of the way the political parties and other bodies at the moment are dealing this issue. This issue. There's a reluctance to deal with it effectively because it does mean trying to, of going down to your, your, your power base in working class areas and trying to persuade them that to change their way of doing things in that, that, that situation. And that's not going to be so easy. But, I think I'm, I have a suspicion I'm probably hitting my... Seven, in, seven in the, 